I teach creative writing and my topic is on dream maker or am I quaking dream? So we talk about, you know, youth this day. I, um, it amazes me what I've heard so far from the young people. <coughs> everyone is so passionate. Okay? Everyone has this dream. And everyone, I think, especially the group who goes around, uh, the flash mob group, they're also very brave. Okay? And my students, um, they amaze me because at 17 years old, uh, 16 years old, they are so sure about what they want and all of them want to be writers. Okay? Um, was I like that when I was their age? Did I know that I wanted to be a writer? No way. Okay? Because um, I went to JC because my friends went to JC. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no idea what I could do. I was too afraid to be. Okay? And now what happens is that I'm faced with um, these young people in front of me every day, looking at me. Looking at me with such passion, with such hope that I will help them make their dream come true. And that scares the heck out of me. Okay, because I want to help them. I want to be their family godmother. Okay, but what I'm afraid that I might end up doing is become the wicked witch and break their dream. Okay, and that's not what I want to do. But uh, it comes to the territory, which I'll explain later. A long, long time ago, when I was in school, huh? I was not the student who, you know, you always have these students who get their essays published in their yearbook. I'm not one of them. You have these students that, you know, during assembly they get announced because they won some kind of writing competition. I'm not one of them. I never won any competitions. And the reason maybe is because I never took part in any competitions. Okay? I was so afraid. I was never, never like, wow, writer. I mean, I loved books. No way I could ever think that I could, like, people pay me money to write, you know? It was too big a dream to dream. So I never dared to dream. But I wrote. In my little notebook, I would always jot down, you know, my thoughts, you know, little poems. And um, my day, you know, I felt angry, oh, that's when I feel pages, okay? And when I'm happy, you know, it will feel pages too. And the difference now is that my students are writing too. They write, they write. Some of them write um, like all over the page, around the page, on their phones. They write all the time, but the difference with me is that I never showed what I wrote to anyone. If only one of my teachers saw that I had talent. Okay? If only they noticed that, hey, you know, I got my good grades, I aced my literature, I aced my English, okay, but it was not my thing to go out there and, you know, put myself forward. So, I was kind of like good at it, but no one encouraged me. No one was my fairy godmother, okay? So now, um, okay, that's the past, it happened, okay, and uh, what happens now, okay? I'm in a position right now, okay? It took me 37 years um, to get brave enough to say, okay, I want to do this. I took a workshop, a writing workshop. And then after the workshop, I wrote a script. It was for um, PCK, the biggest sitcom at that time. And when I submitted it, and they hired me. Okay, so that's what happened, and it also shows that, okay, I don't really need that fairy godmother, but, but, it also shows that you, it is never, never too late to go after it. Okay, now, I want to tell you about something that happened, something very special that happened in class, and it is the Rainbow Child. Okay, Rainbow Child is a story, and it came about because I told my students, Give me a children's story. Write a story that 
will teach little preschoolers something about life. Okay? And these three girls, Genevieve, Kelly, and Jadida, sitting over there, okay? the three writers okay, came out with a story which they called Rainbow Child. And the first time when I heard it, I said, this story is special. The Rainbow Child is a story about a town called Bloomsville, where everything was black and white. The trees were black and white. Animals were black and white. Even people were black and white. But one day, a little girl was born. She had fiery red hair. She had rosy cheeks. And her parents called her Sephora. And Sephora was so different, but her parents were afraid. They were so afraid that she will get teased. And this girl was going to be so odd, so weird, that she is going to have no friends. So every day, what they did was they painted her black and white. Okay? They painted this girl black and white to fit in so that she would not stand out and be different from the rest. So what happens next? You will find out during the break. But Sephora was very special because it's a story about being different. And the reason the girls wrote it, because they felt different. They felt odd. One of them said that she also thought she was weird. Because when every one of her friends were playing games, she wanted to read. So that's how this story came about. And this story, I felt, was too precious, too special to keep it on a laptop somewhere and not share it with the world. So what I did was I um, found a design student to illustrate. I went and worked with a programmer. And now you guys can go and get Rainbow Child. Download it for free from iTunes. Okay? Or, uh, it's an iPhone, uh, iPad app. It's too small. It can't fit into the iPhone. It's an iPad app. But it is available. Go and get it. But um, you can take a look at it. I can say doing the break. Okay, so this is what I call like my fairy godmother moment. You know, I help them. They, you know, it made me feel good and to see them feel good about what they've done. But I made my students cry. <laughs> Seriously, I made um, not only the girls cry, uh, the boys cry too. Okay, which is kind of um, um, and why do they cry? Because creative writing students are very sensitive. <laughs> they take anything very personally because it is personal. It's not about a formula getting wrong. When you write something and you critique it, you're talking about them. Okay, and they take it personally. So that's when I feel like, ooh, I am in my wicked witch mode. Let me tell you about a love story which I made them write. Okay, one minute. I told them, write a script for a love story and some of them were very excited some of them not so but one particular person um ellie okay now the names have been changed to protect the okay? <laughs> she was really excited because she had a story that she wanted to tell it was her story it was about the pain that she went through and she wanted to share that pain in her love story and she wrote that script and when we read out the script in class, her classmates laughed. Okay? Not because it was funny, it was like great funny life. They laughed because it was cheesy and it was the lamest love story they've ever heard. Okay? And they laughed. And you should have seen Ellie's face. It's like, you know, they're not laughing at my words, they're laughing at me. This is my story. Okay? And after that session, she came up to me and said, Miss Me, I don't want to write anymore. Okay, I don't want to be a writer anymore. So I felt very bad because okay, maybe I had a part to kill her break her dreams, you know, but I didn't laugh. Or maybe she saw me laughing. Maybe I did laugh. I don't know. Maybe I did laugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I did laugh and that's why she's I don't want to write anymore. Okay, and um, but you know, we have students like that. That happens and you know, the moment that she thinks that you know this is going when they hear it. 
um, my pain is going to be shared, people are going to like feel what I feel, know what I know, but it did not happen at all the way she anticipated. All right, and that crushed her, that hurt her. Actually, what I'm more worried about are the students I have who say things like this. I want to be the next, I want to write the next Harry Potter. Okay, or I want to go to Hollywood and be a scriptwriter. And then I look at their work. And then I think, uh, not going to happen. Okay, but what do I do? Do I tell them, uh, not going to happen? Okay, and again, crush and cry again, you know, crawl under the table, cry even more. Uh, or do I tell them, the truth okay but you know tell them really tell them the truth now you know make them really reevaluate what their dreams and passions may not be you know what they should be pursuing or um, tell them persevere you know be strong get in it you know one day if you really 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 want it it will happen do I do that or do I tell them the truth but what is the truth okay experts get it wrong too American Idol, Simon Cowell. He said, Jennifer Hudson, okay, you've got a great voice, lady, but you're not going to be a star because you're not pretty enough. Okay, and what happened? You guys know what happened to her? She won an Academy Award, and she's the only American Idol uh, contestant that won an Academy Award, you know, and she is a star. So, Simon Cowell is wrong. But wait a minute. She won an award for playing um, the role of someone who was very talented but was passed over for the lead singer's role by Beyonce because she was not pretty enough. Simon is right. So the thing is that, you know what, I don't want to be right. You know, I really want to be that fairy godmother to help them because, like I said, you know, no one was there to um, help me through. Um, I'm not bitter about it because I'm happy where I am, but the thing is that I want to be there to help them see their dreams come true. I don't want to make my students cry, okay? But at the same time, I don't want to be like making them dream something that is not going to happen, okay? I want to tell them the truth, okay? Um, my mom told me this. Uh, she said that you can't make curry chicken if you don't have curry powder. But you can make chicken soup. Okay, <laughs> so what does that mean? That means that honestly, if one dream doesn't turn out the way that you want it to, hope it to, dream it to, okay, um, find another dream. Okay? Because at the end of the day, if there's one thing I want you all to take away from what I said so today, now, is this. Okay, dare to dream, be passionate, be brave, okay, be all this, be strong. But remember, if you can't be curry chicken, then be the best, oh sorry, be the best chicken soup that you can be. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Miss Wee.